Welcome back. Hope you all had a good day of doing stuff yesterday. So welcome back. Let's look at fractions. Don't dismiss this lesson too quickly like, eh, I don't even know how to do fractions, whatever. There's some neat stuff I'm going to show you today that you might not know. Uh, but let's talk about the definition of a fraction. And, and let's say you have something like you know, three fifths. If that's actually a division problem. Every fraction is a division problem. This is divide. This symbol means to divide. In other words, you have three, let's say three pizzas divided among five kids. You each, gonna, you each can eat three fifths of a pizza if you do all do it evenly, okay? That's the numerator, that's the denominator. We, 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 you know, we hear about things like common denominators and all that kind of thing. Now equivalent fractions is if you were to take three fifths, and let's say you had three fifths of a pizza. So it's one, two, three, four, and so on. All right? You could take this <clears throat> and you could go, I can eat three fifths of this pizza. One, two, and then you could eat, you know, assume these are all the same size. Now, if you were to cut both of those pieces, all the pieces, in half, like this, you would be eating six pieces of pizza, right? Out of how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So three out of five is the same thing as six out of ten. And all you need to do on fractions is something we'll talk about in a second. Yeah, I was at a pizza party the other day. The guy was like, you want a medium pizza? I said, yeah. He's like, you want me to cut that into four pieces or eight? And I was like, better make it four. I don't think I can eat eight pieces of pizza. It's too much. Okay, let's take a look. The denominator numerator rule is this. Whatever you do to the numerator, to keep things the same, you have to do the same thing to the denominator. In other words, if you cut all those pieces of pizza on that last slide, oops, whoop, into two, then you need to take care of the denominator as well when you write the fraction. So if you cut that in two, you're gonna have six pieces you ate, but the entire pizza, of, excuse me, the entire pizza will be made of 10 pieces. So you do the same thing to the numerator and denominator to make things the same. That's it, okay. All right, you'll see things like this. Expand the fraction 3 fourths, so the denominator is 24. So you're gonna look at this and expand this to where the denominator is 24. Well, the question is, what did you have to do to four to make it 24? What multiplying did you have to do? You, you multiplied by six, right? So you do exactly the same thing. It's like cutting the pizza every single piece of pizza into six pieces, okay? You could eat 18 out of 24, which is the same thing as three out of four. Okay, all right, the, you'll see things like this. Write each number with a denominator of 20. Well, let's rewrite it with a denominator of 20. So three-fifths is equal to how many twentieths? Well, again, the pizza thing, you'll have to cut each of those five pizzas into fourths. So you chop them into four, and there you go. But you'll also have to, if you ate three-fifths of the pizza, then, you need to cut those all into three, four pieces. So you, now you're gonna have three times four or 12. So 12 out of 20 is the same thing as three out of five, okay? How about this one? Is this a fraction? That's a fraction? You're supposed to make that into something with a 20 at the bottom? Well, any number on earth is a fraction because you can always put it over one, right? So one times 20 is 20. So you're gonna have to go five times 20, which is 100. And 100 divided by 20, that's what fraction bars are. Remember, don't, it's, this is division. That's 5 divided by 1. That's 3 pizzas divided among 5 kids. Okay, Same thing as 100 over 20. All right. Now, this is where the factor tree stuff comes in very handy. Because let's say you're sitting here looking at a fraction, and you're going, ugh, I do not know how to, I just can't get it in my brain. I'm sure you probably do, but let's just pretend you can't. Pretend you can't. How do I reduce this thing to the lowest terms? Well, use a factor tree if you can't figure it out. So in other words, you're gonna take 30 right here and you'll take 45 right here and you'll go 30, factor tree is uh, you know three, prime number, I'll circle it, times 10, 10 is two times five. So instead of writing 30 in the top of the fraction now, you can write three times two times five. So let's just do that. Top, three times two times five. Now let's go 45. Well, 45, you, we all know, is five times nine. Five is prime, I'll circle it. Nine is nine. 
and then three times three. So instead of writing 45 on the bottom now, we can write five times three times three. So let's do that, five times three times three. Now, all we need to do is chop away the ones that are, you know, they, they're the same. So we can, anything that's common, just get rid of it. Fives go away. Oop, the threes go away. What are you left with? A two and a three. 30 over 45 is two thirds, and that's as low as you can reduce it. Neat trick, I, I like that, okay? Same thing here. In fact, you know what? Go ahead and pause it right now and reduce 79 over 20, uh, 72 over 96 to lowest terms using two factor trees. So go ahead and pause it and do that. Okay, I'm assuming you paused it and did it. All right, 72, let's knock that down. Oh, let's say we'll do six times 12 this time. 12 is four times three. Four is two times two. And then six is gonna be three times two. So let's forget 72 on the top. Let's just write that as three, two, 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 three. Okay, so three, two, two, two times three. Okay, yoink, and we'll do 96 now. Okay, so 96 is, let's just pretend you didn't know. It was just an even number, so you could just go, okay, that's fine, that's 2 times 48. 48, uh, I can't remember. Okay, so fine, even number, 2 times 24. 24, uh, I can't remember, so at least you, you, know, you can do 2 times 12. 12, uh, I can't, no, don't do that. You just, you know it's 2 times 6, right? And then 6 ends up 2 times 3. So now we have, good gravy, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 5 twos, good gravy. Okay, so 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, and then 3. All right, now all we need to do is reduce this thing. So obviously you see the 3 here, right? So there's a 3 and a 3. That goes away. There's a 2, there's a 2, there's a 2, there's a 2. There's a 2 and there is a 2. Now, notice all you have left here is a 3. And down here, all you have here is 2 times 2. Well, don't just say 2 times 2. You can just go ahead and say 4. So this reduced as much as possible is 3 fourths. Beautiful little method, isn't it? Okay. Did you feel yourself tearing up a little bit? I kind of did. I mean, I felt myself, not you. I'm tearing up. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at a couple of practice problems. Pause this. Do your practice problems, come back when you're ready, and let's do them together. Okay, well, I'm just going to use some of the uh, space on this page here. So the A is write that with a denominator of 18. Well, you know, 3 is actually 3 over 1. If you're going to write it with a denominator of 18, that means you multiply 1 by 18. 3 times 18 is 54. So that's your first one. That is A. B Write this with a denominator of 18. Well, if you have 1 sixth and you want denominator of 18, that means you multiply the 6 by 3. You multiply the 1 by 3, it is 3 eighteenths. C, 4 ninths, this is what we have. We want that a denominator of 18. That means you multiply the 9 by 2. So the 4 gets multiplied by 2 as well, and there you go for C. Now reduce this to lowest terms. Let's try D. You probably saw that. Uh, D is 18 over 24, 6 is the largest or the greatest common factor. Goes into 18 3 times, goes into 24 4 times, so that is 3 fourths. You can do the factor two if you want to. 36 over 72, I don't know if you noticed this immediately, that's a half. But if you didn't, you could just keep chopping, chopping, chopping until you, you know, did the factor tree method. 15 over 25, again, you can, let's just pretend like you couldn't figure out what that was. You could just go 15 over 25. Okay, well that's five times three, and then, oh, that's five times five. So instead of writing 15 over 25, you're gonna sit there and go 15, five times three. So five times three is on top, and then five times five is on the bottom, and you go, oh, there we go, those cross out. So the answer is three fifths, and there we go. And then it's how you knock down this stuff. So, all right, that's enough for today. Work on the problem set. Good luck. See you guys next time. Take care.